your tithe, bring your pain, bring your kill, bring your pain. Don't you know that's not your name? You will always be much more to me. Every day I wrestle with a voice. Right between 
Jesus loves me. I was lost, I was in chains, the world had a hold of me, my heart was a stone, I was covered in shame, when he came to me, I couldn't Let's go.
last Wednesday, I touched on a subject that uh, is it just really opened a lot of uh, uh, doors and a lot of understanding for me personally. And I hope for you this morning as well. As I talked about the power of God, the power of God, it's a very real power and it's very powerful. Uh, look at Psalm 145 11. Psalm 145 11. Kyle, go right ahead when you get it. 145 11. It says, They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power. Uh, this is what? Who, who, who's the they? The they are the people of God, us. And here's something we need to be doing more of, and I don't think we nearly do it enough, and that is talk about the glory of the kingdom and talk about God's power. It's very real. There's a reality of God's power that we must get a hold of. If we want to see victory, if we want to walk in the victory of life and the victory, then we must understand and walk in the power of his might. That's what it says for us to do in Ephesians 5, to walk in the power of his might. In Romans 4.21, out of the NIV, so, so Kyle, you need to look up on the screen. Romans 4.21, the NIV says this. Being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. That's what I want for you today. I want you to leave here knowing and believing understanding and being fully persuaded not just persuaded but fully persuaded because when someone is fully persuaded nobody can knock you off that truth nobody fully persuaded about what that God has power to do what he says he will do I believe knowing and understanding God's power is the key to open up to opening up everything we need for life and godliness through Jesus Christ. It's, it's, it's an unsung hero in the Bible that we don't sing about much, but we need to. Look at Job 27, 11 out of the NIV. Sorry, Kyle. Out of the NIV one more time, Job 27, 11. I will teach you about the power of God. The ways of the Almighty, I will conceive, I will not. And that's what I want to do this morning, teach you about the power of God and not conceal anything. I mean, we don't hear much about the power of God. It's been subdued. The enemy doesn't want you to know the, about the power of God because it was the power of God that defeated Satan when Jesus died on the cross. Amen. 1 Corinthians 2.5 is amazing. It's amazing and an eye-opener for many Christians. 1 Corinthians 2.5 says this. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So where should your faith stand in? The power of God. So when your faith is standing in the power of God, now your faith will move mountains. Now your faith will open heaven. Now your faith will bring every blessing from above. But your faith must stand in the power of God. That's what I want to talk about this morning, the power of God. Now, there are several attributes of God. The Bible speaks of God being all-knowing or omniscient, all-knowing. We must comprehend that. We must understand that. In 1 John chapter 5, it talks about God knowing all things. Now, if he knows all things, there is nothing he knows not of. He knows all things. So when you understand that God is omniscient, God is all-knowing, he knows all things, he has all wisdom, how does that help you? It helps you when you need to make a decision. It helps you when you need to know and have counsel on what to do. You're going to the one who is all-knowing, his thoughts above all other thoughts. So now you have no problem with inquiring of God on what to do and which way you should go. He's all-knowing. 
Praise God. Many want to go to a Wizard of Oz, to a man, or to something. We go to our Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ, who knows all things. So not only is God omniscient, but God is also omnipresent, meaning he's everywhere present. His glory fills the earth. His spirit is everywhere. He, the Bible says he sees all things. That means he's everywhere. So when God is ministering and helping you and listening to you, he's also listening to someone in China and someone in New York. When you understand that God is everywhere present and he's always with you and he'll never leave you nor forsake you, you'll never be alone again. You'll never feel that loneliness that God has left. Where is he anyway? He's right here. He's an ever-present help in the time of trouble. And then a third attribute I want to share is what I'm talking about. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful, and he has all-surpassing power. It means there's no power higher than his. It's wonderful when you understand God's power, and he wants you to. His power has done so much for you, and we'll get into that. We're to walk again, to walk in the power of his might and have that victory in Jesus Christ. Amen. Now these attributes are, are divine. Only God has these attributes. All knowing. Everywhere present. All powerful. When we start giving these attributes to Satan. It causes great harm and misunderstanding. Satan is a created being. God is I am. So the devil is not all-knowing. He's not everywhere present, and he's not all-powerful. In fact, he's been stripped of his power by the demonstration of the cross. Now, I want to give you some power scriptures here. Praise the Lord. Look at uh, Psalm 62, 11. It says, all power belongeth to God. Power belongeth to God. He is the all-powerful. Uh, the book of Matthew says, Jesus said, all power and authority has been given unto me. All power, all authority given unto me. That means nobody else has any except what he has delegated or allowed them to have. Go ahead and read this, Kyle. God hath spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. That power belongeth unto God. Romans one twenty, Kyle. As soon as you find it, please read it. Romans 1.20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Wow. Here it says not only did God create everything you see by his power, but also that his power is eternal. Do you see it there? His eternal power. His eternal. Say it with me. His eternal power. His power is eternal. It means it has no, it has no stop. It, it's on and on and on. And li listen to this. God's power does, it, does, does not diminish. It does not decrease or increase. It's the most all the time. It never lessens. Oh, it was a hard day. <laughs> I need to power up. Oh, no. God doesn't have to plug into anything at night like you do. He is the source. His power is eternal. It's mega. It's dunamis. God's power. The almighty. Wow. Whew. Just talking about it makes me dizzy. Amen. It boggles your mind, but we must understand God's power. We don't hear about it much. I believe it's the key. That's why you don't hear about it. It's the key that unlocks everything. Watch. Watch. 
Jeremiah. Oh, let me give you the warning first. May I give you a warning the Bible gives about God's power? 2 Timothy 3.5. 2 Timothy 3.5. Go ahead, Kyle. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Having a form of godliness. Talking about religion. Having a form of godliness. They praise, they worship, they read their Bible, they, they, they go through all the motions, but they deny the power thereof. From such, turn away. Turn away from such teaching. Get away from such gatherings. Ooh, Jeremiah 32, 17. This is awesome. Jeremiah 32, 17. This is awesome. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm. And there is nothing too hard for thee. There's nothing too difficult for God. There's nothing too hard for him. Nothing's impossible with him. When you understand God's almighty power, you'll say amen to God can do anything. And see, this helps you with your issues of life. If you've accepted the fact and stand on the power of God, that God can do anything. His power is awesome. It's all surpassing. There's nothing higher. It's the highest. It's the most. You won't have any problem believing him for your provision, for your touch, for your problem. Because you're going to the Almighty. Check this out here. It says, O oh, God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power. So God's power creates. As God spoke, so we hear a lot about God speaking things into existence, but it's God's power that brings it to pass. The word of his power. The Bible talks about the word of his power. God spoke and it was. How did that happen? Power. Power. The word of his power brought everything to pass. That's why in Romans 1.20, it says, look around you. Man is without excuse. In other words, you might not have heard the gospel yet. You're still without excuse because only something divine, only something powerful can do all this. That's what he says. Hallelujah. His creative power. Bringing forth something from nothing. That's power. That's power. And only God can do that. Well, look at the Isaiah 40, 26. Oh, I love this. Isaiah 40, 26. Go ahead, Kyle. Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created these things, that bringeth out their host by number? He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might. For that he is strong in power, not, not one, one faileth. Now, there's, there's two points of view. Talking about the angels, the heavenly host, or the stars themselves. Doesn't make any difference. He created all the angels by his power. He created the stars and hung them and calls them by name. Why won't God listen to me? I mean, look, this is, what God's, this is what God means in the scripture. I, I don't like it when people say that. This is what God really means. Excuse me? When you can create a star and hang it in the sky and call it by name, I'll listen to you. Until then, zip it. Put it in your pocket. How's that go? Amen. We're talking about the creator and sustainer of all things by his power. That's awesome power. The Bible calls it, King James, terrible power. Well, terrible means awesome. Amen. Now look at verse 22 as I take a little side bar here, if you don't mind. 22, you know, it, it's been 
well, only five, it's only been 500 years since they stopped believing the earth was flat. 500 years ago, they were still believing by scholars and wise men, the earth is flat. But thousands of years ago, God schooled us and said the earth is round because he made it. Look what it says. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a cir- curtain, and spreadeth them out now as who was a tent right? to dwell in. And who was wrong? Back 500 years ago, that was the wisdom of men. It's flat. You're going to fall off. But yet thousands and thousands of years ago, God speaks of the circle of the earth. Look at this one. Oh, this is great. Psalm 77, 14. Psalm 77, we're talking about his creative power. Now, what about his miraculous power? Miracles, signs, wonders. These wonderful things we see in the Bible. The Red Sea splitting. The, uh, the sun stopping for uh, Joshua uh, so he could fight the fight and win. Water coming from a rock and uh, uh, mighty f- feeding of the 5,000 and, and people, uh, blind people seeing and so on and so on and so on. Walking on water, stilling the storm. Come on! His miraculous power. That's power, God's power at work and it's still working today. Psalm 77, 14 says, Thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Wow. You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the people. So so miracles are what? God's displayed power. Are you with me? Miracles. They are God's displayed, manifested power. It's called glory. God's manifested power. God's power would move upon people and they would be healed. The lame could walk. And the Bible says they glorified God. See, manifested power, displayed power, is God's glory demonstrated, shown. We having fun yet? See, I want you to get to the place where you resolve in your heart and become fully persuaded and stand upon God's power. Here's one that has to do with the Christmas season. Fits right in. Luke 135. Here the angel, Gabriel, comes and brings a message to Mary. That she was going to be with child. We know the story. But here's something a little deeper. Luke 135 says. And the angel answered and said unto her. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee. Shall be called the Son of God. How did the virgin birth come to pass? God's power. God's power. It says, in the power of the highest. Who's the highest? Talking about God Almighty, the Holy One. His power overshadowing, which literally means, cover, listen, listen, overshadowing, overshadowing literally means to cover with a cloud, the glory cloud. Shekinah glory covered Mary, and she conceived. God's power. See, when you understand, and then the angel says, is anything impossible for God? No, nothing. Yes, she says, how is this going to happen? I haven't been with a man. I haven't been with a man. How is this going to happen? See, her mind couldn't understand it. And that's when the angel said, it's God's power. (laughs) Enough said. Overshadowing you, covering you. The power of God brought forth that virgin birth. Do you understand that? His power. How important is the virgin birth? Many people struggle with it to this day. 
been here, what, 15 years. People still ask, and they struggle with it. It's hard for me to believe the virgin birth. I don't even talk about it. I said, let me tell you about God's power. <laughs> because when you understand God's power, you have no problem with the virgin birth. Do you understand? Amen. It's vital, the virgin birth. You better believe. You, listen, look at me. You're, you're going to write me. I know. Get the letter out. Or you all email now. But I'm glad I got staff that filters that stuff out. All right. Oh, they're waving at me. You cannot be genuinely saved unless you have faith and believe that the power of God brought forth the virgin birth. You can't be saved. How does that work? Without the virgin birth, you have man involved with redemption, which messes it up. I had a better word. I'm not using it. It messes it up. Doesn't it? But the power of God turns messes into miracles. Whew, I like this preaching. Amen? The miraculous, God's power at work. Look at um, 1 Corinthians 6.14. God's power involved in the resurrection of Jesus Christ himself. Involved in the rapture of the church, the coming rapture of the church. It's God's power, friends, that brings us from earth to meet Jesus in the air. God's power. NASA can't do it, but God can. 1 Corinthians 6.14 says, And God hath both raised up the Lord, that's resurrection, and will also raise up us by his own power. Rapture. By his own power. Not somebody else's. His power. True power. Grab a hold of the reality of the Almighty. The power of God. Oh, this is a great one here. Romans 1.16. Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Lift your hands. Say this out loud with me. It's personal, isn't it? Come on. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first, also to the Gentile. So we see here salvation comes by the power of God. It's, it's the gospel. The word with power that saves you, regenerates you, changes you by God's power. What did Paul cry out? I want to know him and the power and the power and the power of his resurrection. That's the power of God. We want to know. Lift your hands. Let's cry out to God in prayer right now. Lord, I want to know the power of your resurrection. I want to know and have the power of God in Jesus' name. Amen. You've just touched power. I'll tell you why. And I have so many scriptures here talking about God's power saving you. Not only saving you, but keeping you until that day. So not only does God's power in 1 Peter 1, 5, not only does God's power save you, but it keeps you, protects you, and keeps you unto salvation through faith. Faith in what? In power, in God's power, in Jesus Christ, who is the power. Now let me show you something. Not only does God have power, he is power. I know, shocker, shocker, I know. God's power is inherent 
You know what that means? You can't separate the two. The two are one by nature, by his very being. You can't have God over here and his power over here. The two are one. God is power. Power isn't God. There's people that worship power. Talk to, talk to all those freaks that want, want a nuclear bomb. They love power. No, we love God, who is power. God is love. God is light. God is power. Say, God is power. Say it. God is power. Let me show you. Mark 14, 62. Mark 14, 62 speaks of the power as a name for God. Mark 14, 62 says, And Jesus said, I am, and ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Sitting on the right hand of God, sitting on the right hand of power. Same thing. God is power. So everything God says is power. When power speaks, God speaks, his word is power and will accomplish what he sends it to do by his power. Here's the deal. If God dwells within you, which you believe he does, his spirit, God in you, that also tells you if God is power, and he is, power is in you. And Ephesians 3.20 says his power is working in you. Come on. What does 3.20 say? Now unto him. 320? Go ahead. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Why can he do, why can he do exceeding abundantly miracles? Why can he do it all? Because of his power in you. So when power, God, speaks, his words are power. To do what he sends them to do. Now check it out. So now you understand when God spoke the world into existence, yes, his power, his word with power created what his word sent it to do, what his word said to do. Don't you understand? His word is a parameter for power at work. If power is just released, it gets destructive, it's chaotic. But when power is released with word, now it will accomplish, accomplish what it's sent to do. It has parameters. God will never use it, will never release power to do what his word doesn't say he'll do. What a safeguard. What a way for us to live knowing his word is true. His word is powerful, more than a double-edged sword. And when power, God speaks. Things change. Victories are won. Eyes are open. Deaf ears. People walk that are lame. Wow. Wow. By his power of his word. I, I want to throw this in for a goodie. You know, you got to love Ecclesiastes. I mean, <laughs> you just got to love it. It's like little jewels, little, little whipped cream or something. So can I give you something sweet? Ecclesiastes 8.4. Go ahead. Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? <laughs> where the word of a king is, where God's word is spoken, there is what? Power. Power. I told you it was cute. Keep your faith in the power of God. 1 Corinthians 2, 5. That to me is amazing. God, the word. Jesus, power. That's why, saints, the Bible says that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power to do good 
and to heal and to deliver those that were oppressed. So Jesus, who is God, who in heaven operated the word, operated in all those attributes, everywhere present, everywhere all-knowing, all-powerful, but set those attributes aside when he walked among men in human form. Set them aside. So how did he operate? How did he do all those things? By the power of the Holy Spirit, by God's power, he discerned, he healed, he did the miraculous, and that same power is working within you. Oh, if we'd have eyes to see and ears to hear. Now, I got a couple of more scriptures, and I want the whole band up here, please. Everybody. All the instruments, please. Thank you. Look at Mark 530 out of the NIV. Because Kyle, the King James says virtue, which is power, but let's just see it for what it is. Mark 530 out of the NIV, please. Go ahead. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? Wow. Remember, this was the woman with the issue of blood. And she came and touched the hem of his garment. She touched power. God is the power. She touched power. And Jesus said, I felt power leave. Virtue, leave me. And what happened when, when power leaves the power source? She was healed. If there was a live wire here, which is the power, power source, and I touched it, you get zapped, right? You just got touched by the power of God. <laughs> something changes. Your hair's up on the end or something, you know. But when you touch power, God, things happen. His word is fulfilled. His promise become yes and amen. When you put your faith and stand on the power of the Lord. Amen. One more verse. What was that? Matthew? No, no. Mark 5, 17. Is that correct, Rhonda? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, Luke 5, 17. Thank you, Rhonda. Don't pay her no mind. Luke 5, 17 says, go ahead, Kyle. And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee, and Judea, and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them all. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. What, was, what had been going on? Jesus had been teaching the word, just like I've been doing. The word of the Lord. Remember, when the word of the Lord goes forth... In faith, what happens? Power. 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 And what does he say? The power of the Lord was present to heal them. Well, saints, the word of the Lord has gone forth. And the power of the Lord is present to touch and to heal and to help you this morning. I want everyone in here to stand up, please. The power of God. Great graphics, by the way, Rhonda. Thank you. Amen. All heads bowed, please. We're not ashamed of the gospel, saints, for it is the power of God to the salvation of everyone who believes. God's power is available today. All we have to do is tap into it. Prayer taps in to the power of God, who is the source. Eternal, divine power. All sir, uh, There's nothing higher. Almighty God, the Bible says. Almighty power. By the raising of your hand, is there someone here this morning that wants to put their faith in the power of God to change, to change. I've talked to so many people 
that their lives are a wreck. They've tried so many different things. Now, what I'm asking someone here to do this morning is try the power of God. Try Jesus. He who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, changed, made brand new by the raising of your hand. If you need God's power in your life for a change, to be born again. If you need Jesus Christ to step into your life, power to come in now. Raise your hand quickly. Quick, quick, quick. Yes, yes. Yes, I see your hand. I see it in the middle. Yes. Yes, you too. Let's pray together right now. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Forgive me my sins. Forgive me my sins. By your great power. By your great power. I call upon the name of the Lord. I call upon the name to of be the saved. Lord. To be saved. I confess with my mouth. I confess with my Jesus mouth. Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is with Lord. all power and authority. With all power and authority. I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. That God's power. God's power. Raised him from the dead. Raised him from the dead. Now according to your word. Now according to the, word word. Power, the word of power. I am saved. I am saved. Made new. Made new. Brand new. Brand new. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Somebody clap right now. Come on. Give him glory. We're going to sing, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. All right. Let me ask you, who needs a touch? Who needs a breakthrough? God's power is present to heal you. Now, some people just received the greatest healing of all. A soul set free of sin. We're going to pray. Come stand in his stead. If you need prayer, whether it's financial, whether it's physical, emotional, whatever, come on. Let's touch the hem of his garment together. Let's pray. Let's know that God is all-powerful. And his power will bring the miraculous for you. It will. So if you're struggling with anything, Get out of your chair and get up here right now as we sing. Come on, Dwayne. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. He's a pastor's pastor. Where's the chapter? Come on.
God bless you. See you soon.